What's up, guys? Mikey in the building. Hope you guys had a good day today. Um, today was uh, a good day for me. I just, this BCTX was probably my best trade uh, return wise uh, out of the whole day. Um, I'll go over my day. I traded BCTX in the morning, uh, particularly. Um, I started to add and soak and to this pullback right here and I'll go over it on the book um, before I do that you know emphasize the daily and this was good volume pushing this up into um, this range on the daily and I'll zoom out real quick all right uh, I go over a lot of particular dailies and things that I like to target and certain gap fills right uh, I think this daily is a great daily okay I really like to see some of these downward channels being attacked and then filled, right? So if we got this mini one right here, so obviously this is important, right? 88 cents, okay? And then I'll show you that pullback and kind of the reasons why I started to add into those particular levels. This is also, if you run this out, this is a breakdown zone, okay? I actually had a lot of stuff marked up on this chart. I'm going to kind of go through that again, but I always... I'm always prepped. Preparation is so important when you're trading, guys. I can't tell you enough um, how important it is to prep. That way uh, you build a thesis and reasons to hold certain PTs. Uh, how would you like price action level two, the book, to react and trade when they start to reach certain levels? Okay, super, super important. All right, so if you see this is a downward channel, okay, this is a bigger downward channel. All right, if you break this down, there's a couple of zones, and we're just kind of going over all this. I had all this marked, but I'm just breaking it down again, right? So this is another channel. To me, this is another breakdown zone right here. All right, breakdown zones are anything that are kind of dumping, retesting, and failing, right? And you can draw another one probably potentially right here. So there's a few of them. I kind of stopped doing it after a while because then it gets a little too crazy. But anywhere it tries to reclaim, consolidate, fail, reclaim, reclaim, consolidate, fail, and so on. But to me, this is a big downward channel right here. Okay. Mini one right here. All right. Now, going into trading this. Grab the book. Okay. I've been studying a lot of reversal patterns on the book. Very important. Um, I've been spending a lot of time on actually watching rotations after I tried to do my best to capitalize on a front side move, right? In this area, this is this this is important right here. Not only this is an aggressive move up, but this is an aggressive walk down right here. There's a lot of volume that actually pumped through this to get through these levels. This is that breakdown zone on the daily I had right here. The fact that there's a bidder right here and sellers come in and sell through this buyer and it starts to consolidate and they pull this offer right here, this little controlled offer right there. Nothing crazy. Obviously, someone doesn't want to get filled here and then they book flip this. This is nice. So This is where I actually took, took some and accumulated before it actually took off. This is another great ad right here. All right. Super, super nice. All right intraday now I've really been using the book only so it's very easy to see a type of breakdown zone or an area that should potentially maybe bounce right if you draw this this is like pretend this is dumping and now I have a clear zone right here so in fact if I took this and just drew out the zone I pretty much have it tapping right here come down here run it out right so this was a nice pullback before this continued and ripped and then you had another book flip as this started to break out they shoved a bidder right here all right on that one take this off all right what's interesting about this one is is that they had nice bid follow-up and then this guy right here came through another important factor is to understand that these guys had warrants and then eventually later they actually dropped an offering and it gave the whole entire move back and it filled its gap down all the way back down okay so they, ri they rig this up in pre-market and then to have it sell off open market and get really really heavy and fill the daily gap down 
okay we're playing gappers so or you know uh, essentially right gappers create volatility the volatility creates range to try to capitalize on going long and catching a nice return or a short nice return all right so this was that zone the reason why I soaked and actually added this okay this particular was a nice re-add before it swiped it if you actually see the volume going in this this candle right here was key because if you see this push up right here this push had more range in this candle and it was 288k these candles right here were 437,000 and then 639 smaller compact candles with a lot of volume in its punch and this is a low volume pullback this was that pullback right here that you saw on the book and sometimes the book shows better zones to me in my opinion right it's a little bit clearer more visual so this was that swipe a seller tried to come over here sellers got exhausted and they started to swipe it buyers are interested and a really nice bid fall up the whole way up I actually got a dollar per share out of this one which was really really nice um, I did not hold for that that two break okay um, really really great again this other zone first of all it rejected at first and then we started to consolidate and hold above this zone all right you can even see these rejections up here and it's crazy how they line up it's like you know um, it gives you a really good idea and again um, when we start to actually trade in these levels and how do the zones line up it's for me or how is liquidity being pulled up right and whether they're spoofing it up walking up right and it's actually nice to see some of some of this when we see things walking up as price action starts to increase all right super super key that was a really great trade for some reason today I put too much emphasis on 10h it's crazy because the size I had and multiple times today when you know I'm, I, I soak the bottom let's even soak this dip right here you know and uh, soak this dip and rotated this all the way up every single time I wanted this I actually break out more on the daily and I never got the move um, doing that it took my focus away from CNEY which would have been a better return better breakdown zones on that one but you know I, I stuck this one out and I saw it way through even though this one did not work I capitalized really well on uh, BCTX this morning so I paid the price and and was in this trade uh, nearly all day <laughs> uh, a lot of things learned and being up uh, you know, four, four to six k on this, and then to have it come all the way back down and make almost five hundred bucks was a little painful. But at the same time, there was a lot of things learned from this one. You know, it's uh, a, a couple of things to break this one down. Right, was just the inconsistency of the volume. All right, this is a lot different than that QH trade. I think I had the two. You know, of, of trying to hold on to the one from yesterday right QH and then I'll jump back to that one but you know QH yesterday I soaked this me and Jay soaked this really well down in here um, and I had a lot of size right and I ended up catching a really nice squeeze up into the 80s uh, for new highs and then you know I let go of that core and then um, I honestly did not play it a lot anymore I was really satisfied with this return right here, which was uh, a 60% return. And then, of course, this thing goes uh, crazy, right? You guys can see, All right? That was an, an insane move. So, you know, the whole day I just had this thing in my head after um, a, a soaking, accumulating 10H. It was like, you know, I, I want to hold full. I want to hold full. Uh, all or nothing on this one and, and that's okay you know this had more better characteristics to check off in the box right that the insane consistent volume as you can see all throughout the day on this one and then even when it started to pick up if you look left I said that a lot we started to see into close into power hour uh, that look left volume 
right? And you know, average volume on this one, if you break it down to like right there, this was average volume, right? Really good volume. And if you draw a line right there, you can kind of see how all of this is actually, you know, meeting the standards of actually picking up again, all right? It's not breaking down and we're getting some more consistent volume again. And then of course we get a crazy uh, after hour run on that one. Uh, it was, you know, got a couple scalps out of it, but I'm not trading, I'm not scalping these heavy anymore and playing uh, this high, but tons of things learned. So I, I think I had that going into that other name. And when I sized them pretty heavy, um, you know, I wanted the move to work. Didn't, didn't happen, you know, but that's okay. 10 H to me, this daily was very, it was in between a, a, a tough spot and a hard rock or whatever you guys, however you say that. This 2150 was this pre recent VWAP and then the recent VWAP from 9.4 was 1730s about. So we were actually trading in that range, right? We didn't break down from this, you know, our 9.4 day and then we were having trouble actually reclaiming 2150s. And my biggest thing was, and of course, it's okay, next time I'll listen, is um, probably taking the profit after I waited for so long up in this range right here, you know, and, and taking the 4, 5K off that trade. Next time, though, um, you know, I, I, no matter what, I think the most important thing is to learn um, when to hold them more and then when to actually liquidate, right? Uh, a couple key things right here is that once we started to actually run this up, we had a spoof bidder kind of go through right here. And this had no more continuation or a book flip or anything to show that they wanted more out of it, right? So this one in particular was just hunting this liquidity and then eventually selling off and then it finally cracked. You know, this was kind of expected after a while. Uh, you got massive higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. And then now we got that big uh, higher low attack dump right there, which and then eventually you see it fills its gap down all the way back down. That's fine. But, you know, I was still satisfied with that BCTX uh, dollar return. And then uh, a couple of other trades. And I, I caught Tesla a little bit today again too. Kind of always keep that in the wheelhouse, and trade Tesla and kind of get nice returns on that. Um, FTCI got a couple moves out of that one. Uh, did play this rotation right here. Once I started to see this consolidate, and actually prelate it over here, uh, and, and and got a little clear out scalp. This obviously needed to go. And then again, without that bid follow up, you kind of got to take what you need. At that point, <laughs> at that point during the day, I was just uh, not sizing in too crazy. I think I had like 36k on that rotation, but um, you know, I, I I took it that time, right? It's hunting that liquidity, and then if you see that one, FCTI. Sorry, uh, FTCI. You know, again, it's the same kind of things right here. There's a bunch of uh, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. This finally swipes highs and then comes crashing down. And then we got that big, we get the crack, right? The breakdown, retest, and then no more follow through. This one was also up a lot. So, you know, got to be mindful. These things need to go because if not, they're starting to create too much space where if they try and they fail, uh, there's definitely more reward to the downside than there is up to the upside. Thought maybe potentially we get a 65 tap, but uh, it's very important. You know, if you look at the Wheeler structure um, that I went over to uh, recently, you know, this is a big zone right here, you know. So all this is doing is swiping and retesting this after our run and then failing to break out underneath here. You know, maybe a stronger push market, that would have been great. But, uh, you know, you can clearly see that there's, there's no follow-up. There's a lot of spoofing going on too, right? You know, maybe this helps uh, ignite this, but, you know, someone's throwing up 200K, 100K, and then they're pulling it right away once buyers kind of step up, right? That's not what you really typically want to see.
um, on that one. But that's all I got, guys. Uh, hope you guys capitalize a little more than I did. Uh, I could have took my scalps on these, but you know I like to hold. Um, it, it pays. I learned a lot through this price action being in names uh, and and trying to cut out that emotion of being up a lot, you know. And then obviously I was trying to hit, I think double my profit on that to see this kind of uh, for 10 inch actually to actually break out of this, but um, it didn't happen, and that's okay. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, much love. Peace out, Mikey.